control, back deck. Hercules is outside of the leg of the starboard A-frame. Copy. Deck control, that's as good as we're going to get with the current right now, so um, as soon as we get in, we'll, we'll be good. Copies. This is an audio slate for dive 20. This is an audio slide for dive 2013. UTC time is 19.21.05. Mark. Control, back deck, Atalanta's in the water. Back deck, I'll stop at five zero meters, sending control to you.
Mr. Waters, do you want me to fire the dive salvo? Thank you, it's already fired. Hey Bob, can you power cycle the Triclops camera? Aloha and good morning, everyone. Welcome to Dive 2013. Good morning. How is everybody this morning? Yeah, good, excited. Super morning. It's been a great morning. I heard there was a rainbow Double. over the Molokai Cliffs. Double rainbow. Oh, when to get out. Double rainbow and dolphins. And we have like the photo of this I or have the video to prove it. Oh yeah, make sure you share that Absolutely. with everybody. Absolutely. I, I will, but you just can't laugh at the tears. <laughs> So Hercules is in descent right now. We have about an hour and 15 minutes approximately. We are headed back to the calmer basalt formations that we attended yesterday. Got some great footage there. Uh, we've done a little bit of a modification today. Rearranged the camera settings so that we can get a more cinematic view of those formations. And uh, 220 degrees view, it's gonna be spectacular. Bob, is the power back on for Triclops? No. Negative, no, no comms from the camera yet. Power cycle didn't receive.
good. Hercules' depth right now is about 127 meters. Still have quite a ways to go, approximately at least an hour. Again, we're headed back to our same location from yesterday. This time with modifications made to the cameras so that we can get a more cinematic view for the VR work that's going to be done. Anybody remember what depth we were at yesterday when we went through all that bioluminescence? That would be really cool to see again today. Yeah, I thought it was three or four hundred meters. Okay, getting close yeah. then. Our lasers on target today, they help us with measuring the size of the target. Ooh. So we could upload, get it in Unreal, and 3D print it all at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. Was that some or was that just to try to? 
Looked kind of sparkly to me. Ah. Nope. Well, you can't, you gotta, you see bioluminescence without lights. Yeah. Turn up, uh, put just the uh, uppers on, Robert, for headlights now. That's porch out right now? Oh, that's it. You want it in or out? Uh, if you haven't touched it, it's fine. It should be in. Which camera's rocked out? Uh, the HD camera. Oh. But it's interesting. So, what if, what if, Still have those wedges that Jay Z made? Huh? What are you talking so about? The wedges that can get the top of the image down here. Oh, that doesn't matter. In a dome that's going to be behind you, and if you imagine this in virtual reality, right. that, that that's going to be up above you. So it, it's not a, I mean, it's not ideal, but it's also not the end of the world because. Uh, it looks kind of cool. Well, exactly. We can't fake that this is not filmed in an ROV, right? And since we can't, we have to kind of own it um, in terms but, uh, of like... You can see the spread now, so they're all looking out. Yeah, I like, like it. this. Yeah. Do you see the cone where it comes in there? Did you the get the side light? Cone. What happened to the side light? The side lights are on the, on the mids. Okay. So the, the mids are looking down, not quite 45. Okay. And I moved them out as far as I could, but you know, we still have more of it, so that's why the one on one side is a little wonky compared to the other side. Oh. Or it's a bit of a light blocker. Oh, we'll see how it looks. We're committed it now. Should, it, it should not cast a shadow with the uppers only when we're on the cliff. So they're kind of set up for a clip dive. Cool. Which we're doing. Indeed. I think we're doing a clip that's dive. That's our mission. Okay. So I'm glad I could be of assistance. You did a fantastic job just really calming me. As you know, patience is not one of my virtues either. <laughs> my, my, my anxiety, that's good. Everybody's okay. Huh? Everybody's okay. All good. Somebody was killed. I'm nervous. Why? I'm not. <laughs> no, I just. Bye. Kristen, how are you this morning? I'm doing well. I've done my first few interactions with folks uh, ashore. So that was exciting. Nice. What nice. age kids? Or I w sat in one one with preschool kids and then we had some middle school kids we had 240 middle school kids oh my goodness wow we had a whole assembly it was really yes, fun she did. they yes, were she very did. excited to talk to us i got to stay up late last night and meet with a middle school class from greece wow that's exciting yes i had to google how to say hello yasu and they were very excited that i spoke to them in their language and then they spoke to me we had a great meeting. How many students were in? We had 20. That's great. Yeah. yeah. And every one of them got to ask a question, which was really nice. Nobody got left out. We stayed on a little longer than we were probably scheduled, but it was almost midnight, so we had the time.
currently at 326 meters. Ten dot Good morning and thank you for tuning in. We're glad that you're here. This is Hercules Dive 2013, headed back to the area that we explored yesterday, the Colmer Basalt Formations. Made a little bit of a modification to our cameras, hoping to get some more cinematic imagery today of the cliffs themselves. Maybe some marine life along the way, that would be nice. Yeah, yeah. That's always good. Yesterday was focused on uh, really collapse, uh, capturing pictures, images that we use to stitch together in a program called Reality Capture, and maybe we'll be able to stream the teams working on yesterday's data uh, from the lab throughout the dive. But today, it's all about uh, immersive filmmaking. So the the two, the port and starboard, the, excuse me, I'll back up. The wide field camera array is a three camera system. And so uh, yesterday we had two cameras on the porch and one on the, the top bumper, bull bar mm -hmm. of the ROV looking down. And we've shifted those now. So they're kind of like a stack of logs on the, on the front porch. And you should be able to see uh, just a hint of those in, the, in maybe sat feed one. Yeah. Yeah, in sat feed one. And so those silver rings that you see at the lower portion of the screen in the center are the uh, forward most edges of the two fisheye lens cameras. And then uh, kind of rocked back behind that d directly in the center on what used to be the tool sled. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's, yeah, thanks, Bob. So we've got them on the porch. The porch is uh, able to move forward and back. And so this is going to be great because yesterday we did notice that the lights were... Uh, affecting Here we go. the There's lenses and now picture. we can maneuver all the cameras basically to try to find the sweet spot for um, not only filmmaking but uh, but getting as much out of the light as we can without affecting the occluding the lens so it's exciting the end product of uh, today's footage it will be able to be displayed and you can imagine an IMAX theater with this epic kind of screen yes. but also in virtual reality and a number of these up-and-coming ways to to use our technology. If anybody's been watching the new Las Vegas Sphere, you know. Yes, that, I have seen that. Yeah, that is really cool. It, it almost makes me want to take a trip just to see and sit and watch what it turns into throughout the day. Yeah, that immersive uh, experience is the sort of thing that we'll be able to do with this footage. That'll be really following cool. Following this expedition. Germany checking in. Thanks, Germany. It's great to have you with us. Well, lots going on behind the scenes here as we're working on our descent. Our operators are monitoring gauges and video is monitoring the cameras, making sure everything is 
just perfect. Lots of work. Yeah, this is the first time this is, we've used this camera system in this um, mode of operation. So uh, tons and tons of learning yes. happening just to configure how we use those, these cameras, control them back here. But then, uh, you know, tonight we'll look at the product and make all kinds of recommendations on the way we do this again. And, and coming up potentially uh, south of the Big Island, we'll have this camera configured like this again, and we'll apply those lessons. And over the next, you know, four dives in this configuration, hopefully by the end of the expedition, we've got a really honed in procedure and setup on the vehicle. The footage is coming out beautiful. And then this can, this is in OET's bag of tricks. Yeah, well, th so these will be available all for every dive hereafter at this point? No, I wouldn't. No. Uh, it's impactful to the typical ROV setup, right? So sampling, the amount of sensors and tools that we can take would be impacted by carrying what is a large camera rig on the front porch. I'm sure if the footage turns out like we hope, there'll be momentum to figure out unique ways to mount it so we can do everything, everything all at the same time. Yes. Uh, but for right now, it's a by request kind of capability okay. that we would mount specially. I had, um, I was working last night on the photo album, so I went through all of the photographs that we were able to capture yesterday on, on the dive yesterday, and I, the formations are just absolutely beautiful. Yeah. I mean, the way that they just kind of end up in, in that shape is just, uh, it's just amazing. Yeah, millions and millions of people visit a site like we were uh, exploring yesterday on land. That's, that's correct. <laughs> And I was we, uh, excited to tell my mom that we had seen uh, in Armenia, we had seen formations exactly like that. Yeah. And so here they are underwater and yeah, seeing yeah, the same yeah. things. Very cool. It was special. Yeah, I think it's amazing. We're, <laughs> we're narrating um, the dive to the internet. And behind us in the studio is an interaction going on, and they're telling the story of our dive. And we're yes, <laughs> I see, I see Madison and Rennie pointing at the screen like, no, this is actually happening right now. They're sitting there doing this. It's a wonderful thing to be able to share this with everyone. That's why I would have never expected to be meeting with students from Greece yesterday, but that was just a very, very cool experience. We've got a busy day uh, on the 31st planned for lots of ship to shore interactions. Oh, really? That's a busy day. Yeah, everybody's everybody's on board for a a meeting then. Welcome Cape Cod. Glad to have you with us. right about 580 meters now we're heading down to 1700 Johan with the with DP uh, issues before launch we thought maybe we would drift a bit away from the potential dive site did we make it back to where we wanted to do we have to steam a little bit to, to get onto site what's what are you thinking no we're actually uh, Herc is positioned to be about 20 meters west of our target site. Perfect. Which is probably great. Good job. Yeah. Looking good. That's like elite navigator stuff where you're like, all right, if the ship DP goes off right now and we drift for the typical five minutes it takes to restart it, then we'll be right at the spot, <laughs> you know, like planning for all those contingencies is it's pretty impressive.
So yesterday, the captain pulled us closer to the island of Molokai so that we could avoid some of the swells, have a little bit smoother sailing for the evening. Uh, a little bit yes and no. It was kind of just a nice to have, like yeah. an opportunity that we couldn't pass up. So Getting close to that island was absolutely gorgeous, and I got lost in it and ended up almost missing dinner <laughs> because I thought, and I also thought I was going to have to do my own dishes, but I did just, just barely made it, just oh, barely probably. made it. But in doing so, I lost the dolphins that showed up yesterday. I lost out on seeing them. So I said, that's it. I'm not eating again. I'm not going <laughs> to, I'm not giving up any opportunity. And then this morning I did not eat breakfast. I brought my protein shake with me, went straight to the deck and guess what I saw? Dolphins. These are the sacrifices we make. It was it was a huge payoff. It really was. And lunch will be waiting, and I'll be very happy. No, we're we're really lucky to have. Um, you know, the ship is not only works hard to to achieve the science goals that we have, but also just to provide you know the best experience we can here on Nautilus. So yesterday was a perfect example of that. We. We have, we're working on the north side of Molokai, but the, there was potential for the swell to come up a bit, and, and we see that this morning. Yeah, uh, you can feel that this morning. And so <laughs> for uh, the team processing data in the lab and uh, for the rest of us trying to bed down last night, we decided to head to the south side of the island where we were find a spot more in the lee, and it was dead calm last night. It was just perfect. But along the way, it gave us the option to sneak in and follow the the north northern coast of Molokai and the yes. cliffs were just spectacular. We hit it right kind of at sunset. It was a yeah, it was a really really special. It was beautiful. It really was. We saw the the captain even came out with the binoculars and was just as in yeah. awe as everybody else. So and I brought some. I got some of those binoculars that attach to your cell phone that allow you to take pictures through. Have you seen those? I keep forgetting that I brought them. So like I have to go downstairs and throw yeah. them in my backpack and just walk around with them so that I'll have them. I'm gonna try that. Yeah, no shortage of camera doodads and gadgets on this cruise. No, <laughs> not at all. Chris Krasnowski's out, he's out filming, filming with, uh, or taking pictures with film, on film. Yes, like, old school. Yeah, we've got, we've got the camera. I like it. Old school. All right, I got a software question. Are you go available ahead. for that? Okay. Roll with it. Uh, could you go into a bit more detail regarding the specific application areas of the RAIC software with regard to which properties is the video material analyzed? This is uh So Yeah, so the Rake software is a artificial intelligence uh, software suite that unfortunately we're not going to be doing during this dive. There might be an opportunity to do it um, and to analyze some of the footage after the expedition. Um, it's a pretty interesting approach to auto classification of imagery um, and I would encourage you to look um, at their website at Synthetic is the name of the company. Um, uh, really a, a very unique way of approaching the complex problem of how to train databases with um, the kind of information that uh, artificial intelligence uses to identify what a fish is compared to the rest of the world. It's, it's a difficult um, problem in the area of undersea because the current conception of how um, to train the models is that you sit there and, and you identify what the fish is and you tell the model this is a fish and more importantly you say what type of fish so that the model can say ah okay well this characteristic of an image that is what a fish is um, but it's a very manual process training AI um, like that and the process that Rake goes through is a different approach to the same problem, and I can't even come close to uh, describing how it actually works. I just uh, definitely take a look at um, the webpage of Synthetic um, AI. It's one of uh, Dr. Robert Ballard's close uh, collaborators and a fellow National Geographic explorer um, that created that program. 
awesome. Thank you. So our expected max depth today will be 1,700 meters. It's about 1,860 feet. We're going to start from the bottom and then ascend, taking video of the basalt formations. Hoping to see some critters along the way. And someone asking about uh, the hydrothermal vents. There are none today that we're looking at, but we do have a spot along the way on this expedition, right, that we'll be checking into? Yeah, uh, maybe the 29th. And the 29th. The 26th, I guess. Uh, let me think. I, might, I don't have the calendar right in front of me. But, uh, yeah, I would say the 29th would be... Uh, maybe our opportunity at what was known as the Lohihi uh, vent site. It should be interesting. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing. Yeah, it's, it's um, amazing. Uh, what Dr. Beller was mentioning the other day is it's a it's it's a young vent. So the oh, okay. chemosynthetic uh, communities haven't yet formed there. So the, one of the interesting things will be to compare the previous uh, imagery collected there to what we find and see if we do see the start of these sorts of communities developing. Nice. How long ago did this site get uh, investigated before? Uh, let me dig in the, our little record here. Good question. But Nautilus has been here before. The Okeanos Explorer dove here before. It's been routinely. Yep. So there'll be quite a record. But never in a. Multiple 6K cameras, I guess, is that no, the new? That's yeah. the new hotness. That's going to be the best part. And never before seen resolution. Never before seen resolution. Hey, that you have a really good theater voice. That was fabulous. <laughs> gotta, that was you fabulous. Gotta add the right one. <laughs> Gone are the days of 4K. <laughs> Out of complying 12K resolution. Pushing the cutting edge. All viewed on on a cell phone. Well, I'll I'll admit as a uh, as a self-defined media head for this stuff, I am very excited that um, Apple is getting into the fray for VR XR technologies. Yes. Um, Surprising that they are a little uh, slow to go. I think that they were rightfully gauging that 
market and the opportunity to see Smart. what would happen. And um, having seen a couple of sneak peeks at what they're working on um, in terms of how to deliver the media to a user, not just the technology, but, but the user interface and how they're making media available um, in a more accessible manner than um, like Oculus and some of the other technologies that are currently there. Um, it's it's going to be quite quite remarkable, I yeah. think. Um, I'm sure you're probably already on the wait list. <laughs> yeah, to <laughs> say the least. Yeah. But this is this is exactly the footage that is designed to meet that specification, uh, right? So so the resolution, the fidelity of the image, so like the the perceived uh, um, resolution of it, mm -hmm. the contrast, all all those little things that really matter. To, to really meet the highest specification out there. Yeah. Um, that's that's what I'm just really excited about uh, delivering. And as a teacher, thinking about using something like that in the classroom and just opening up that world, all of those worlds, everything, you know, inner space, outer space, it's oh, just, yeah. it's endless. It's exciting to think about. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I, I, for, for the usage of this camera system, there's many different ways um, that we could use this type of media. The photogrammetry, video games, real-time simulations, mission planning with uh, these kind of 3D models. But I'll tell you what, I can't wait to be in a classroom with all of the other team members here that have, have, have put this together, right? This, this is a pretty big project. It took a year to design the cameras and to work through the SOPs. What the real rewarding thing is going to be sitting in a classroom or sitting in a museum and standing there in a full room dome immersion scenario yeah. and just watching people just stand there in awe of how amazing the deep sea is. I agree. And I, that's, just, I that's want to hear the first kid squeal yep. as this starts and I will be, it will all be worth it. That's my favorite part of teaching is to have those moments. Yeah. They're, they're few and far between, but when, when it happens, it just, it fuels you for the next yeah. time. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. yeah. I cannot wait. <laughs> for sure. It's going to be absolutely awesome. Perk's current depth is 969 meters, 972, always changing. I've always found heading down the water column or or the ascent back up is always just as interesting as once you get to where you're going because it's the anticipation of oh, yeah. what could possibly show itself, what might reveal itself, and you just you don't want to take your eyes off of it because you don't want to miss it. Yeah. I was surprised from, uh, I guess surprise might be the wrong word. But I was excited about, uh, on our last expedition, we had Mesobot out with us from Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. Mesobot's uh, kind of a stealthy drifter, autonomous mm -hmm. underwater vehicle that works in the midwater, uh, designed to, to be, it, in the application we were using it, directed to these thick layers of biology that we could see with what's a high-powered fisheries sonar. Mm -hmm. and. Um, we would target a layer of biology, direct Mesobot into that layer, and then they would not only sample the environmental DNA uh, within the layer, but turn the cameras on. And some of the footage that we got of the animals that were living, that were in this layer, making this migration every day to the surface and then back to the deep sea and to the surface and the back sea day after day, was um, the, the animals are plentiful, but capturing them on film 
was really, really new. And so uh, Jonathan helped consult with the Mezobot team and has the baby version of the cameras we're using today on Herc in Mezobot. And so some of the footage oh, nice. that came out of that, those dives was the first of is its that kind. back there on the surfer? I'm gonna have to check that out. It is. I think maybe maybe we have the highlights on the. I think so. Yeah. I have been learning more about since I've been on board um, the collection and water sampling and collecting the DNA in the water and then determining from the animals that are like that's fascinating to me. Just taking the water sample and then breaking that down to be able to figure out what lives around. Yeah. Well, we we had both. Uh, uh, the deep ocean profiler, which is a, uh, which is from the University of Rhode Island, in a full ocean depth capable lander, designed to be dropped. It falls with gravity to the seafloor, and then has a full uh, CTD rosette, or ros like a water sampling rosette, that's got these 24 of these large uh, water bottles, and they can be fired, triggered, as it comes up through the water column, and then when the samples get on back deck, they filter all that water for environmental DNA, you know, mm -hmm. these little cell particles that the animals have shed as they have uh, been in um, that, like, uh, uh, volume of water. Right. And so it was like eight hours of pumping to filter all of that water on deck and very labor intensive. It's and on tedious, the, yeah. And on the other hand, we had Mesobot that had a whole pump system all built into it. No. And so the Mesobot has this pump system that when it comes back on deck, they simply unscrew the filters that are associated with the pump. All the all the pumping had been done subsea, right? Oh, nice. So you have the filtered sample already. Already ready to go. Contained, and it was... Uh, Straight to the wet lab. The, it was a clear version, a view of the future, right? That you're like, oh, in situ sampling is definitely the way to go. Wow. Got a really good question here. Uh, if there's anyone that wants to field it for geology and asking about the formations, what's it, uh, how? I'm not going to be the appropriate person, but as soon as I fumble with it, someone that someone it, else that can knows jump in. Come up and okay. So <laughs> how thick would the flow have to be in order to cool slowly enough for the procedure of these columns to join? Ooh. What's their <laughs> vertical thickness? That is, that's advanced geology. Yep. Eeks. So let's just see, in the back row, we have <laughs> a coral biologist, a camera nerd, ocean a robotics and en yeah. ocean engineer. How about <laughs> Kristen? Uh, and a biogeochemist. <laughs> mm. So, so uh, we're we in charge of today's- We might have to get back with you on that question then, huh? We're in charge of today's geology-focused expedition. Yeah. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> uh, it is a great question. We'll we, have to. We do have, we'll have the to right see if we can find the right people on board to, to find uh, that out for kind you. Kind of phone a friend, and we can we can uh, phone a friend. That's phone a friend point. is good. good phone yeah. a friend. So, but the the columnar basalts form with very uniformly mixed lava cools at the special rate, right, to form these hexagon shapes. And so uh, yesterday we saw a formation that was 25 meters tall. And uh, because of that requirement for that being uniformly mixed, I would think that that layer was deposited all at the same time. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it was One uniformly deposited flow. and then it cooled at the necessary rate. And we did see um, layers of these formations deeper, isolated from this one that we found higher. So maybe that has uh, something, I don't know. It's a reasonable start, at least, to yeah. thinking it through. Yes, for sure. Yeah, so 25 meters tall. So that's an that's, 80 foot thick. That's a wall lot of, of lava. I thought you said that that's one. a lot of lava flow. Okay.
Whoops. Just at about 1,200 meters now. Our goal is 17. Bob, was that the don't touch it? Yeah. Just leave it alone laugh? <laughs> Devin, how about we do, uh, we're getting, you know, we're in like the last third. Could we do like a round robin and Absolutely. introduce ourselves, kind of what's going on with each station? And Absolutely. I'd be happy to start. I am Devin Jones. I am a science communications fellow here aboard Nautilus. I am a sixth grade science teacher from Clarksville, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Shout out to the Kirkwood Cobras. What's the mascot? The cobras. Cobras. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Are they native to Tennessee, the cobra? No. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, they're not. Um, but neither were the Vikings. So there's yeah, another there one. And yeah. then we had a dolphin, too. And <laughs> the mighty oak tree, that was probably more relevant to, to where it, yeah. So, you know. But I'm super excited to be here. I'll be working um, this 8 to 12 shift. So I'll be here for all of the descent and a little bit of the exploration. What's then, your role as a, a, the science communication fellow? What's, so what's your responsibilities? I in? have had a lot of responsibilities, more than I anticipated, but I'm super excited by every one of them. I, I wasn't, um, wasn't fully aware of what I was walking into, but that's sometimes the best thing. You just go for yeah. it. So uh, in addition to working my eight to 12 shift, I also hold uh, ship to shore communications with classrooms literally around the world. Met with a classroom from Greece last night. I'll be um, working in the photo lab area, making, making the uh, photo albums of um, the photographs and the images that are taken along the expedition. Doing an Instagram takeover today, so that'll be, nice. that'll be up and running and um, posting to social media. And then anything and everything else that I can get my hands into, because I love to learn. I don't know a lot about technology yeah. or the geology of things, but I yeah. will sit and listen because yeah, it yeah. just gets into that filing cabinet and I store it for later use, like the RAIC. And now I know it's called Rake. 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 Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. But I'm super excited to be here. The, uh, I think if, if folks on the ship only did one thing, yeah. It wouldn't work. No, no, no. You know, no. One of the things that I'll be taking back is, um, you know, I talk to my kids in the morning about learning how to collaborate with each other and working with each yeah. other. Even, you know, they don't want to. It's no fun. One person does all of the work. The other person, don't be the hog or the log, you know, that whole thing. And um, it's, it's the only way that this ship is successful yeah. is the collaboration and working together. Fact. Agree. Fact, Agree. fact, fact. Who's next? Ignacio, good morning. Nope. Can't hear you yet. Nope. Okay, yeah. hello. Hey, Bye. there you are. Hey, good morning. Sorry, the rocking of a ship was making me fall asleep. Oh, well, I'm yeah. glad I got gotcha. <laughs> Um, so my name is Ignacio Herrera. I'm a graduate student at the University of Puerto Rico. Um, and so my role on the ship is to use the um, data that we're collecting to digitize the underwater world to create this immersive virtual experience for um, to hopefully bring the audience into this kind of world. And it's pretty interesting, um, like how you were just talking about how you kind of had a roundabout way in your career, and same thing with mine. Um, I'm typically 
In my undergraduate course, I was a coral biologist, did a lot of research with coral bleaching and ocean acidification. And um, when this opportunity came up, I jumped on it. I mean, you should never, and this is uh, my two cents on it, but you should never limit yourself to just one specialized area. Di diverse yourself. Always diverse yourself. And Do you remember what you said at dinner the other day when you were talking about um, opportunities? Oh, yeah. Can um, you say that again? I loved the way that you <laughs> said that. I was like, I want to write it down and put it on my board at school so that the kids would always hear it. Yeah, uh, so yeah, it, uh, it's better to be ready for an opportunity and not have one than to have an opportunity and not be ready. I love that. I uh, love that. Yeah, and so um, even if you're if you're jumping into something that you've never done before, um, it's going to be very scary. But um, um, just like in all science, it's, it's uh, you will always have somebody that you can help you out and um, on this on this research vessel. I mean, we're all just um, very, um, very intelligent. We can all help each other bounce off ideas and, you know, just learn from one another. I think that's like the best part of science. Absolutely. I agree. I agree. Thank you. Kirsten, we can finish, or finish the back, the back row here, Kristen. Yeah, thank three, you. Three down, two to go. <laughs> so I'm Dr. Kristen Mitchell and I work, uh, with the Office of Naval Research uh, on their internship programs. We have high school, an eight week high school internship program and a 10 week um, internship program for graduate and undergraduate students. And those applications are open now. They are paid uh, internships at one of 30 labs that host high school students or one of over 50 labs um, that host graduate and undergraduate students and our applications are open now. They close on November 1st. So if you're interested, please go to navalstem-interns.us to apply. Um, and I also work on some of the in-house uh, research at the Office of Naval Research. So we fund um, research at 11 Navy labs across the country and they work on um, basic research um, areas and they, they help to you know, make the Navy do what the Navy does. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, we were looking at, we were talking to um, some of our schools and just making sure that they were introduced and aware of that program because so many opportunities out there that we just don't always get the the information and, and a lot of times yeah. you don't know it. So we've yeah, been trying to spread the word for you. And we appreciate it because that is the hardest part of my job is making sure that people know that the opportunities are available. So we talk to as many people as we can, as often as we can. So and, I appreciate and a paid the assistance. internship at that. Yes, a paid internship. Yes, and all that information can be found at the website navalstem-interns.us. Thank you. Um, yeah, and I just wanted to chime on in. Um, if anybody's interested, um, we're going to actually have a, an interview with Dr. Bob Ballard today around 12 Pacific awesome. time. People want to log in and um, watch it through the um, online platform. You can also hear about his amazing achievements in science and also hear uh, more about the opportunities from Kristen and um, other individuals who... Ignacio, is that going to be from? Yeah, so that interview is actually going to take place here on the Nautilus. Uh, so it's going to be live streamed. Um, and at that time, we will have the Hercules in the water. So okay. it'll be a great, uh, an you amazing. You said noon? At noon Pacific. Noon, uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so it's um, going to be very interesting for sure. Absolutely. Ignacio, thank you. You will also be highlighting some of the opportunities aboard the Nautilus. Um, one of which D Devin is currently doing as a science communication fellow, and there are also internship uh, opportunities aboard the Nautilus doing ROV, mapping, um, ocean science things. So there's a lot of opportunities for students aboard the Nautilus as well, and educators. We'll double check and make sure that we're getting that as a live feed. Let's just make sure that we have that coming up because that would certainly be worth attending.
All right, anybody in the front row would like to do their introductions? Anybody ready to go? Sure, I'll take it on. Thank you. Uh, hey everyone, my name is Johan. I'm a PhD student at the University of Rhode Island when I'm at home. Um, here on the ship and on this watch, I'll be the navigator. Uh, my role in that sense is to kind of position the ship and make sure everything's in a good and safe position while we're doing operations as well as during launch and recovery so that Herc and the science team can achieve their science goals. Um, and that's pretty much it. Johan, what's at URI, what, uh, what are you doing your dissertation on or what area of research? Uh, I'm working uh, in ocean engineering and with a focus on ocean instrumentation, so developing and deploying new and different kinds of sensors. So this cruise is pretty applicable to yeah, yeah. that kind of stuff. Thank you. Anybody else in the front ready to share? I'll go. Okay. Hi. Hi. <laughs> ROV is busy right now. I know. I, so. I, I was trying to figure out if it was a linear thing or are we just kind of hopping around? Oh, I think we could hop around. Let's do it. I'll be the filler. Okay. Uh, my name's Pete Thorderson. I am in the video team here on the Nautilus in the control van. Um, I am uh, sitting next to uh, an intern that's working um, alongside of me um, in the video team, and um, we'll toss to her in a second. Um, I am a broadcast engineer by trade, and uh, we're here to support all of the recording functions of the ROV. Um, uh, Herc uh, Zeus camera is our main responsibility. Um, it is a uh, high-definition camera with broadcast lenses. It's it's uh, professional grade, and this entire video system is all broadcast professional. So um, it's an incredible platform to um, showcase all of the incredible footage that um, we record and send out our satellites. We have three satellite feeds for those of you at home. Satellite feed is uh, our primary camera. Uh, satellite feed two or channel two on the website is um, our, uh, what we call our affectionately our sled, and this particular sled we're using now is at Atlanta. And Satellite 3 is a myriad of things, and I think primarily today you'll see mostly um, the uh, new uh, camera system we're testing, um, affectionately called Triclops. So we'll be switching some feeds around down Sat 3. Um, so I'm going to toss over to Manel and uh, my intern, and she's going to talk about herself for a second. Hey, good morning, guys. Good morning. Um, my name is Manel Morangi. Um, I'm from uh, Maryland, from Silver Spring, Maryland. I currently work at Maryland Sea Grant as a science communicator for the uh, coastal resilience and uh, aquaculture sections. Um, yeah, I'm actually a filmmaker by trade. Uh, that's what I got my undergraduate degree in. So, um, kind of a learning all things broadcast in this uh, video engineering intern role, but it's it's really exciting and it's really fun. Um, it's just a, it's a whole whole new world, so to speak. Don't you dare close your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> there have been so many times I've wanted to just burst out in some sort of a Disney Roger. song. Sorry, we're going to have to shut off the chat while we uh, do a bottom approach. 10-4. All right. Is it, we're coming in on a cliff, so we can't have any chatter here. Thank you. Uh, 
No. We got rock. Yep. Yeah, you just stop. Bottom in sight. And stop. Stop. <laughs> Okay, so can you try and spin around and line up with me? Well, I guess we gotta we gotta do all our uh, white balance and whatnot here. Did you already switch over to Doppler? Okay, can you, yeah, can you do that? Are you able to bring it around? Okay, there I am. So you're happy? Okay, I'm gonna go auto XY so don't mess me up. Can we uh, can we move this ship a little closer? Just come in. I don't know, 15 meters or something.
Uh, just letting everyone know we're going to go dark for a second um, as we do uh, white balance. Thank you. All right, auto white balance uh, completed. Thank you all. Can you uh, zoom out? Yeah. Come on, I'm gonna come down some. You wanna follow me? You can give it that. Shh. So where are we looking for uh, position-wise here? Yeah. Okay. I can do some lateral in here. What's it? What about the depth? Can I get down lights off, please? I get. Get two on a number. Is one seven? Okay, so we're uh, still coming down then. Oh, that's the cinema cam. That's the cinema cam coming out on the bottom left. On the bottom left is broadcasting out this, which is the main cinema camera. Is that going to get in or is it? Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. 
the rack now. We'll get rid of these actors. All right, uh, Bob, just say when you are nice and oriented and we can get the cameras into their right rack position. Uh, yeah, we're not on the target yet. On the yep, just say when. We're a little shallow still, so it'll be a couple minutes if we're going right for the target. We're not seeing any of the calmer basalt yet, so we want to be there. Yeah, I still need a chair. We have an extra one. We're a little north of the target still and a little shallow. Everything's good. Yeah. Uh, not significant, I think. I think everything seems looks like this. Seems like it's all working out here. I didn't really dial in Z bias. I just threw that number at it. So. I haven't done any, I just finished it. white balance, so. Yeah, we just got here. Yeah. Uh, you want, you want to start moving south? You ready? I'm ready. Man. Test one two, test one two. Here you loud and clear. Good afternoon. Hi Dan. Did he uh, deploy? I forgot to ask him if he deployed anything. Negative. Not, uh, he didn't mess with the porch or anything. Okay. I'm going uh, nice and slow, by the way. I'm just going through all of my settings here. Right, yeah. Let me get the uh, lay of the land here myself, and uh, I'm going to try and, I think Robert already has it nailed, but try and uh, dial our uh, Z bias oh, in a little. Boy. Roger. Gonna be able to have um, OBS full screen again, John? Oh uh, yeah, just stand by ten. Roger. Hey Pete, I'm gonna mess with OBS on that computer. Uh, if you're broadcasting it out right now. On. Uh, there you go. Uh, the production Mac is currently going out on SAT 3, if you can switch uh, that to... No, you're fine for now. A different control feed. 
Thank you. Uh, yeah, actually, if you don't move for a moment, I'm playing around with the uh, uh, with the trims just to try and get the vehicle to uh, fly itself. Basically, I find it flies much better if I let go of the control sticks. Roger, three zero meter move. Um, set. Can we try uh, irising down a little bit? I'm going to look up more than I normally would with the Zeus because we have uh, played around with the uh, lights for specifically for a cliff dive. See if there's a sweet spot there where the lighting is even on the Zeus with only the uppers on, maybe somewhere in there. Well, it's only the upper lights which are looking straight forward. So let me come up a bit so it's um, vertical in front of us. I think it's still going to be a little dark on the bottom, and if I look up anymore, it's going to be blown out on the top, as usual. Okay. Yeah, this is Iris full open. Roger. Okay, I'm going to turn the mid lights back on, and I uh, can crank it down just a little bit. Somewhere in there, there's a... Can't figure out where it is. I'm too far away though as well. That's uh, you can come up come up five please. Yes, up five. I came up, sorry, I should have told you. Just so the tether's not uh, hitting Atalanta there is good. Yeah. It is. Yeah, mm -hmm. Should be good there, mate. Thank you. It's got such a wide field of view. What PC are you working on, John? Um, I'm just getting MJPEG streams running on my monitors here. Uh -huh. And then I'm running to... What uh, PC are they plugged into? Um, just my computer right in front of me. I had to bypass ah, right. the video system for this. And then um, we'll have Production Mac running OBS full screen once I... Production Mac? Yeah, production Mac, because the uh, Triclops is being used. Is that on the uh, KVM? Yeah, it's on the KVM. And it? Uh, it took over Norbit's slot. But um, I'm just... I can, uh, I'll pull it up here, so give me a second. Right, control all X. Yep. Log in, ADM, oop, use your mouse, and... Yeah, and I am. And we hit this little uh, yellow one here, and we'll pick. Uh, yeah. It should be jam locked. Okay. Yep. PC four. Production mat. What page is that on? Six, seven. It's listed as EO production. EO, thank you. DVEO? Huh? EO production. Ah, I agree. So if I then view that. And then I can close out of this.
Boom. That's pretty dark. Uh, that's not live update. I'm just going through some settings real quick and then I'll update that. Should be complete, looks like. Oh uh, yeah, that's not stable. live yet. Well, I'm gonna go through some settings. Complete. I'll get you up and going. Time lapse. Time to go. Why? What do we got going on there with Crafty? Why are you way out there, Crafty? That seems crazy. Oh, it's leaving me a booby trap. Just gonna back off a minute here. I need to uh, stow the craft manipulator. Roger. Yep. What did you have to do to get OBS to finally go? Use a Mac. <laughs> I love it. Way too many keyboards done back here. Dan. Yes, sir. Uh, somebody routed the Mac and PC4 as well. We had it on three. Uh, uh, yeah, I routed it to four. Okay, it was on three already. I That's did. fine. I did not know this. It's okay. There I am, trying to be hey, self-sufficient. Um, self I appreciate that. <laughs> For Bob back here, can we get um, this production Mac on the top right monitor? On the top right, RO, the ROV? Yeah, top right of the display wall quad. Uh, ROV, that's your call. I can do that. Yeah, no, the top monitors belong to the back row. Copy that. And the bottom two, monitor three and four, are meant to uh, for the front row. That was the grand plan. A grand plan. Somewhere there was a plan. I'm never and involved in this. It was a good one. It was a good one. For anyone listening, I'm just getting all the screens set up and ready to go, going nice and slow. Stuff that you can't really do while you're in blue water because you need to actually see an image. I'm just going to try and uh, move that. Cine me cam out a little bit, so um, yeah, please do. I'm going to turn on the downloads while I do that, so I can see that physical camera. Okay. Are you all right with that? Absolutely. It's going to blow you out a bit. Um, do you want the 
Uh, stereo cameras out at all first? Yeah, you can get everything set up like we discussed. I'm right just uh, right messing it. with the thingy. I'll mess with my thingy, you mess with yours. Do, 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 do. What button? I, so I have to be way, way careful here to press the right button first. Porch yes. out first. And just the bump, so you see just a little bit of manipulator there. Happy with that? I am. And then uh, the new tool tray, which is our cinema camera here. Look at that bad boy coming out to play. Not bad. <laughs> all right. Now, that was purposely done to wedge them all together. Now yep. they are a single fused unit. Yep. Minimizing the shake. So we still have a little bit of uh, stereo cams in the image there. Nope, nope, that's totally fine. That's, that's a feature, not a bug. I'll that is remove a feature. those in post. Roger, gotta give those post people something to do. Fix it in post. Fix it in post. Someone got that. Totally. All right, so just... Okay, those quick. annoying uh, disruptors are now off. And uh, while we're here... And the weather is participating nicely. I just... I use this to kind of judge how the lights uh, look. So I'm going to uh, sneak up on Atlanta a little bit here. Just put it right in the middle of the uh yeah, you know. Can I crop in OBS? Can you uh, tilt down just a little on your uh, camera? Yeah, that's good, 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 good. Uh, that ain't no ground hole. We're not zooming in on Atalanta, right? Huh? Is that I for me? I just want to ensure no one's uh, messing with it, so I'm using it to judge my... Can you, though, you can uh, Atlanta Iris a little bit, please. Not you. Video. Copy. Okay. That's full Iris. Uh, yeah, I just, uh, we had that kind of glare there, because we got the lights kind of centralized. Uh, ow, ow, my eye. Me. Ow, my eye. That's ow, morning. Ow. Starboard. <laughs> I don't know what's going on Main there. Main cinema's kind of behind it. Uh, it might be a noisy potentiometer on the yeah, controller. Yeah, I'm putting it in auto. Roger, auto. We like everything in auto. Okay, can you uh, no, we'll tilt up just a little bit with your camera? Uh, yeah, that's good. So, um, <clears throat> this is kind of a good view. It gives you an idea. Hercules is, uh, as usual, steady, steady as she goes. That's the, uh, the swell you're seeing there coming through in Atlanta, moving up and down through the water. But also, if you watch the pitch and roll on Atlanta, it pitches quite uh, violently when it comes down. So I'm seeing uh, only a couple degrees there, but on some of those big ones, I was seeing like three and four degrees. So in addition to the up and down, we get the porpoise, and that's, um, you'll also see that when we're um, dangerously low or close to the wall. It'll look like, oh, I'm, you know, hitting. But what's happening is um, it's all of a sudden looking down instead of looking forward. And that's more uh, that's um, more evident when we have uh, more, you know, the bigger swell we have, the more that that happens. So uh, one of the things I notice with the new kids sitting there is every time it does that, they reach over and get ready to <laughs> uh, pull up. Which, depending on where we are, if you, you know, it's like jerking your dog's leash all of a sudden. So. All right. Um Data, can you please record down some settings that I'll give out, Kristen? So uh, I'm now going to uh, I'll turn call out some core settings for here. the data log, if you don't mind. Yep. So I'm going to start off with uh, camera 212. 
that is port. We have our resolution set to 6K. Can you bring your Project head? FPS you see how you're parallel to the wall there? Split duration 15. On the sonar? You go back. Bring your head 90 degrees to the right. 6K, then what? Uh, so we want that. We want to be looking right hey, into uh, the wall. Can you get off SPL for just a half a second there, sorry. sir? Are you talking to me? Yes, Dan. All right. All right, so. Sorry, uh, Mr. We want to be question? looking. Let's try looking per, into the wall. So, that again after 6K? so that's yep. uh, too far there. We have Come back to 6K. Left. You, you can use your camera. 2997. Split duration 15 minutes. Um, I'm going for ProRes 422HQ. And let's uh, uh, come up. Uh, time code is verified at free run up. We Exposure, we're going to start at. Uh, one sixtieth of a second and F seven point one. ISO is set to auto and the value yeah, is currently your camera over you're 40. going through these way too fast, <laughs> friend. Okay. You know camera stuff, so this is like intuitive to you. But we're literally trying to type exactly what you're saying. Okay. It's technical. Where are we at? Exposure. Uh, exposure is one sixtieth of a second. One sixty. Aperture seven point one. ISO is going to be fine control. Uh, 7.1. And ISO fine. The white balance is at 4,000 Kelvin. Yep. And the autofocus is off, obviously. 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 And to start, I'm going to be recording in Rec 709 as the image profile. I've verified that the Easy Link is set to S. Just say Easy Link S. And the streaming target bitrate is at 20. Oops. 20 megabits per second. And we have clean cards. So port camera ready to go. Moving on to cinema cam, I'm gonna say everything again um, in that order as we kind of go through my checklist here. Hold on, let's go through the... All right, so this is camera, what's the IP? Uh, 10.1.70.214. 214? Yep. Yep. Right. Resolution is at 6K. Yep. Uh, frames per second, 29.97. 29.97. Nine, Split durations at 15. Yep. Recording at H.2422, I'm sorry, ProRes 422HQ. ProRes 422HQ. Time code is confirmed correct. So uh, where were the columns off to our The little shutter little speed is going to be one sixty second. We were on last night. They were way away. F seven point one. I am not no what I was on at the moment. And ISO is set to fine yeah. auto. I think we're going to want to do a shit move here. Can you look to your left for me? Locked white balance at four thousand Kelvin. Confirmed autofocus is off. Rec 709 for image. Yep. Easy link is confirmed. Zero, eight, zero puts M, me in the wall. As in Mary. 
we were saying up. Um, Streaming to, uh, is at 20 megabits per second. Yeah, can't get there from here. So right? That's in the middle of a mountain. Oh no, that stream froze up my... I saw them uh, when I first came in here before you moved. Which way did you move the ship? Sorry, let me just finish uh, this. All right, and hold two... On. You want another new camera? Yep, this is new camera. Last three? Two, one, three. Uh, can you... Do you know how to turn on the snail trails? Resolution this is an ongoing is issue every time we start the dive. The snail trails aren't on. Um, 15 minute split duration. What's that? Yeah. 29.97. Confirming starboard camera. Encoder is 422HQ. That's a layer issue somehow. Time code is yeah, good. I'm pulling it. I'm pulling on you. Yeah, I'm pulling on you. ISO auto fine. Shutter is 1 60th of a second, F 7.1. White balance, 4,000 no. K. It's Atlanta. No. Focus is off, autofocus off. Image profile, rec 709. NTP Easy Link uh, is yeah, come S. Up. And 20 megabits per second. 20 or 28? 20, two zero. Come up a little faster. Are you changing your heading just now? No, why did that SSP service? Roger. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. Come up, come up, come up. <laughs> just come up, I'll tell you when. Oh, yeah. I don't know yet. Good job, Nav. So Dan, we're gonna wanna right. kind of understand the the left and right extent that's of this. I'm, that's what I'm doing right now. Cool. Sorry, I had my head down copying camera settings for the boss. Um, um, as we say, getting to know the neighborhood. Can you blow up the cinema cam, Jonathan, on the OBS? Just Not make yet. it bigger? Not yet. Oh. Uh, that's good for now. Hey, Dan. I'm going to have to uh, abandon using OBS. It keeps changing some settings, and I don't have the time to figure this out. Yeah, just pull it up in a... Yeah, pull MJPEG. Yeah, all I really want is a cinema cam. I don't care about stereo cameras. That's what I like to hear. And, you know, half of my cameras are... The motion JPEG stream will be better than all of my cameras except for one. Let me put it that way. Boom, chugga -lugga. All right, I just got to go through one settings for your verification. Pro 
Alvarez, 422. Okay, uh, you want to rehome the DVL there? Do I have DVL? Do I have beams? Let me go to that page. Current time. Uh, Exposure. Yeah. Sure. Hey, Rachel? Okay, I'm going to come back to where I'm right in front of you. Second, ISO auto, metering center, shutter speed, shutter, lock and record off. White balance, manual, blah, 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 4,000. Auto focus on. What's your standoff distance right now, uh, Dan? Oh, five meters or so. Auto focus confirmed. Focus position is 80. Can uh, you record focus position on cinema is 800? What's that? Talking to me? Nope. Uh, data logger. We got it. I like it. And focus position for starboard is minus 920. Let's uh, move the ship 10 meters, zero, 090, zero, please. And. What is the cinema camera? Cinema cam was 800. 800. Okay, got it. Yeah, that's, the, that's 214 is the last uh, three of the IP for that camera. Yep. 213 starboard is negative 9, say, say 940. And. You still about five meters, sir, Dan? Holding at five. Hey, Pete? Yes, Dan? You have your uh, magic screen over there. So I have reconfigured the uh, Hercules lights for uh, cliff dive. But you see when I pan up to, it's all blown out in the top. Yep. Just like Jonathan's camera. Not mm -hmm. as bad as Jonathan's camera. Uh, actually, worse than Jonathan. But when I pan down, I get uh, uh, dark at the bottom. Mm -hmm. So somewhere in there is a sweet spot. Mm -hmm. I can't figure out where it is. Can you help me? Happy to. You're darn near close to it right there. Um, I come up so it's all wall all the time. Yeah. Do you want it to be um, perpendicular or parallel to? Or are you shooting mm -hmm. for the best quality? Not wash out, yeah. not dark. Yeah. Okay, so go down. Down. Right there. Right there. So you got a little equal bright up top and a little equal dark down below. All right. <coughs> and if I move uh, a little closer, because we'll probably <coughs> do this closer, it doesn't change radically. It helps. Yep, now Not you're Not too hot on top there. Correct. And okay. For and, two and I'm one wide two. open, by the way. Right. Starboard, I'm going to settle in on focus position 1500, 1500. Were there additional light modifications? What's that? Was there light modifications done after the last dive? Oh, yeah. They're completely different. Okay. I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. So, um... 
the upper four lights are mounted. Yeah, like so this is this car, is a car headlights position was 800 for the cinema cam, which is 214 is the last three because these cameras okay, are Dan, up. We may change the like when order we're set up starboard, so referring and we to get the IPS Atlanta in an ideal filming position and, and we're going to uh, do just run through the lighting test again just so we have it on record. Roger, um, we just and moved the ship yeah, to the two two creep a little closer, and uh, I didn't really see Atlanta move a lot, which is scary, but typical. Uh, obviously, we want to be a little closer. We're 30 meters away from the wall with Atlanta right now, 25 probably. Yep. And you can move, uh, I think that we should try to aim for maybe 20 behind or 15 behind and 15 to the left. So it, the lighting from Atalanta is coming obliquely at about a 45 degree angle from behind. Yeah, that, that was going to be my next question. So we don't have the scary Halloween shadows. Yeah, 45, 45 degrees from behind. Let's try that out at a five meter standoff distance for Hercules. So Roger. that will depend on the very little current that we have to try and manage the tether to one side or the other. Of course. So we can get close without getting tangled. All right. Um, Let's try, uh, how do you feel, you know? I see we're still moving in very slowly. We're just getting up against that 20 meter line. Let's go for another 10. Yeah, put Atlanta right up against the wall. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Bridge, bridge, nav, one zero meters at zero nine zero. Uh, let me go off columns for a second. I've got a trick I learned from Ed. Roger, thank you. Thank you. It works uh, better with your David Clarks because they have little hookies there. But yeah, he had it all pimped out. I think it, he had it on the inside. Yeah. But he hooked it on his uh, headphones, not his ears, because it's more comfortable. have a little well right now we are going to have a interaction uh, at noon so you're going to see a few additional folks come in here uh, about 11 45. yeah big interaction big time television can i get all lights on dan uh stay my one hey dan we're also going to be uh we'll hang out here through the beginning of that interaction when they've thrown it to us and so we have something totally. of this rather than being in our kind of searching mode why is that thing? Jonathan, what's the camera status? You've been, uh, we've had a good half an hour here uh, optimizing settings. Think yeah. We, think we got it? The trick to this is to make sure that all the settings are the same. Uh, at the end of the day, we're going to blend all three of these camera systems together into a single unified image that needs to have perfect resolution and sharpness and uh, white balance um, because we're going to be blending all three of those wow all three of those together um, just really carefully methodically yeah. going through every one of the settings uh, that's awesome yeah it is yeah. Yeah. Hey, Jonathan. Yes, sir. Uh, 
Is your plan to do up, down, or left, or right, or do, is it dealer's choice? Say what? Is your plan to do up, down, like we did before, left, or right? Is it dealer's choice there? Um, I think that we need to start with the reveal. So let's start with the ROV at the end of its tether, tether leash so that um, Atalanta maybe is in frame at the same standoff, I'm sorry, the same distance from the seafloor. We'll back up as much as you can and then we'll slowly come towards the wall to reveal the wall out of the darkness. 